Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to uh, Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church morning Bible study. We are so glad to have you in our midst on today. As we begin this study on today, we're asking that you uh, will keep us all in prayer. Let us begin with prayer. Eternal God, our Father, now we thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for you being God. And beside you, there is none other. Father, we thank you for all the churches. We thank you for all the pastor preachers that are preaching your gospel. Bless them and their families. Keep them safe those that are hearing the word this morning. God, we ask now that you would just help us speak to me and speak through me, that your word will go forth knowing that your word will accomplish the purpose that it is set out to do. That is to bring comfort to a disturbed heart, bring joy to a confused situation. We know it can. We know you will. In Jesus' name and his, for his sake, we do pray. And the church of God says, amen. Again, we say good morning. We want to give honor to God, to whom all honor is due. Uh, to every pastor, preacher that is preaching and teaching his word, we ask you all uh, to stay prayerful. We are praying that God will continue to bless you, your families and your congregations as you continue to deliver God's word under the shadow of a pandemic. But yet we are trusting God and we are knowing that God is able. Please stay tuned immediately after the study. We have a special announcement as it relates to our reopening. Uh, we did target for July, first Sunday in July, but with the numbers climbing the way they are, we're going to push it back to August. So we will, we will announce that again at the end of our study. Okay, this morning we will be going into the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, uh, number 119. The book of Psalms, 119. Book of Psalms 119 and verse 11. 119 and verse 11. Here is the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. With God's word, we can make it. With God's word, we can make it. The word of God is so important, not just in times as a pandemic or in the situations that's going on in our country. But the word of God has always been important. The word of God has always been significant because it is through the word of God that we gain our strength, we gain our faith, we gain that which we need to make it in this life through the word of God. Uh, so when we look at the word of God, number one, I want to make sure you have your pens because we're going to go through some things as we relate to how important God's word is to our lives. Number one, let's look at the discovery. Let's discover God's word. Discover God's word. Say that with me. Discover God's word. Uh, Psalms 119 and 12 says this. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The psalmist asked God to teach him his word. And we should do likewise. He says, show me. I want to, discovering God's promises means finding those that apply 
in every area and need of your life. A good concordance or reference Bible will help you locate the promises of God, and you can apply these promises of God to your life. We discover God's word when we trust him to reveal it to us. See, when you start looking into the word of God and meditating on the word of God, it is very important that scripture is not just to be memorized, but they ought to be lived. See, a lot of us memorize scripture, but do we live them? Do we live them? A lot of us can quote scripture. But can you walk by what you're quoting? Because, listen, it doesn't blow God's ringer when you can just recite scriptures. But it makes God feel good inside that the scriptures that you are reading and meditating, you gain understanding from the scripture. And then after you gain understanding from the scripture, you apply what you have understood and you walk by what you have applied. And you can't walk by what you have never applied. You can't apply what you don't understand and you can't understand what you never meditated on. So it's not just, I'm going to read the book of Psalms. I'm going to read the book of Proverbs just to say I've read the book. Uh, it, why are you in a hurry? Why are you trying to hurry up and read through the book? No, take your time. Allow God's scripture to look in you, search you. A lot of times we, we hear the statement, oh, I'm going to search the scriptures. And that's good. But allow the scriptures to search you. Open up the word and say, Lord, search me through your word. So there is a discovery here. And in this word deals with every situation that you and I have and will ever face. And that's why I don't understand how some people will use God's word to belittle someone else or to bring up someone else's sin by quoting a scripture that is uh, is, is dealing with what they're dealing with to make them look bad. But then the same Bible you're opening trying to find scriptures on everybody else does also have scriptures on what you're dealing with. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So there's great discovery in God's word. You will find things there that will help help you along life's way. Meditate on his word. Fast upon his word. Ask yourself this question. How often do I really pick up the word of God? How often do I really just meditate on his word? How often that when I hear the preachers preaching and teaching that I take notes because I cannot uh, really meditate the way I want during the sermon or the lecture, but I take enough notes to go home and meditate on what I've just learned in church or Bible study. So there must be a discovery there. But then there's another D. That's another D. Not only that God's word must be discovered, that then God's word must be digest. It must be digest. Psalms 119.18 says this, Open, open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of thy law. Now he's saying, he said, I have to digest it. Now I have to digest it. Hmm. Let me read that again. Psalms 119, 18. Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Webster says that digest means to think over and then absorb. We need to dwell into God's promises by studying and pondering on them. Let us absorb God's word until we are absorbed by it. 
Let me say it again. We've got to absorb God's word until we are just absorbed by it. Let me tell you uh, one thing about scripture. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring all things back to our remembrance. When you're meditating on God's word, Scripture is not just going to pop up in your head when it relates to somebody else's sin. But when you are getting ready to indulge in sin and Satan is tempting you, when you are in deep meditation, the scriptures that you needed to help you get out of that thing or to avoid that thing will begin to pop up in your head. The Holy Spirit, he will bring these scriptures up. Remember, wait a minute, you just meditated on this. I just filled you with understanding on this. So we need to partake of God's word, digest it. The psalmist wrote, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Psalms 34 and 8. Digest it. Digest it. Eat it. Absorb it. Digest it. Love those that despitefully use you. Digest it. Forgive me, Lord, as I forgive my debtors. Digest it. If I call on the Lord on the day of trouble, he will deliver me. Digest it. Lord, I'll be with you all the way, even till the end of the world. Digest it. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Digest it. Although many have shut the church house doors, but the church is still wide open. You know why? Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the very gates of hell will not prevail. He didn't say the gates of hell would not come against it, but he said they will not prevail. The gates of hell is coming against the church, but they will not prevail. Digest it. And when you digest something, it becomes a part of you. It goes on the inside and it begins to nurture you. It begins to grow you. You become stronger depending on what you digest. When you digest God's word, you will be more compassionate. You have more love about you. You won't ridicule others so easily. You won't get yourself involved and he said, she said things. You won't have time for gossip and all of the hooray and all of that kind of stuff because you have digested something that has become a part of your spiritual DNA. So not only there's a discovery, but then you have to digest. it. Not only do you discover and digest, but then thirdly, you delight in God's word. Psalms 119 and 47 says, And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. When you look at the word delight, it means to take pleasure. To take pleasure in what God is saying to have satisfaction and to rejoice in God's spoken word. I take pleasure in what God is saying in his word. So when I'm delighting, I'm taking pleasure in God's word. Some people take up God's word as just reading. Reading is a duty, is a pastime. It is something that I need to a perform daily. It's a ritual I do. I'll read three scriptures a day and I'll read a chapter a day and that's it. That That's not delighting in God's word because if I'm delighting in it, I'm taking pleasure in it and I am anticipating what God has to say about me and my situation. Delighting in God's words enables us to be conquerors. The psalmist says in 119 and 11, he said, we are rejoicing. They are the rejoicing of my heart. 
Christians who delight in God's word, love his word, obey his word, and are victorious through his word. Because he said right there, Psalms 119, 165, he says, let us claim the promises with praise. Now watch this. Here's a flip, here's a flip side to delight. If I'm delighting myself in God's word, if I'm taking pleasure in what I'm meditating on, now watch this. Hear me good. There are going to be some things in here that's going to get all up in your business. And you still have to take delight in it because it is still God speaking to you. And how do I rejoice then, preacher? If, 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 if I open up God's word and I begin to meditate on the word and I see things in the word that contradicts how I'm living and I, I get convicted by this and I tell myself, oh God, I need to change my, my ways because God said I shouldn't be saying these things and going these places and living like this. Well, here is the rejoicing, is that the Holy Spirit, he's still working with you, that when you read God's word and it contradicts your living, the Holy Spirit then convicts you and then the change begins. So that's where you all can still delight because when I see God's word, I say, oh my God, I thank you, Holy Spirit. You have led me to this scripture to change my way of thinking, my way of walking, my way of talking, so I can still give God a praise even if I find my faults. And see, one thing about the word of God, the word of God is like a mirror. Hear me good. The word of God is like a mirror. It will only reflect what's in front of it. You can't look in a mirror and see somebody else's uh, reflection down the street. You can only see yourself. And so when you're looking at the word of God, it's like a mirror. You should only see your faults. You should only see your disappointments. You should only see how you hurt God. And not worried about somebody else's sin because there's enough sin of your own to be concerned about. And so I find, I find discovery. I, find, I digest his word. I delight in his word. I take pleasure in what God is telling me. So how, how before we move on and conclude, Brother Pastor, how do I delight? In a pandemic, how do I delight when a nation is in chaos? How do I delight when seeing a man die murdered on national TV? How do I delight? You delight in this, that God is still sitting on the throne. He may have kneeled on George Floyd's neck. But by kneeling on his neck, a nation now is kneeling to God to handle this situation. And look what God is doing. Young black girls and boys and white girls and boys are walking together, holding hands. Well, not holding hands with the pandemic, but, but holding their hands in the air. Together for one cause, we can still say God is moving. A pandemic has brought many people closer to God than it ever have before. And so we can still delight in his word because God is still sitting on the throne. Nothing has caught God by surprise. God wasn't in heaven twiddling his thumb, so to speak, and things happened and he said, oh my, God, oh my gosh, I didn't see it coming. God already knew 
these things were coming. Even before it showed up to us, God knew that it was coming. So I take delight in his word. I take pleasure in his word that we who are his, he will take care of us. And those who he hold in his hand, can no man, no devil, no enemy can pluck them out. I believe that. I take delight in his word. Not only, not only do it, is there discovery and digest and delight, but then finally, I depend on God's word. Psalms 119 and 89 says this, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Let me say that again. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Many people depend on government. Many people depend on their, uh, their party, Republican, Democrat. Many people, believe it or not, depend on their race, thinking it would give you special privilege or your social status or your education. But all these pre-mentioned things can fade away dissipate, disappear, and move off the face of the earth. But when you depend on God, God hasn't gone anywhere. We are to be conquerors. We must depend on God's word. Why, preacher, why should I depend on God's word? Because it never fails. He said, before my word fell, heaven and earth will pass away. 1 Kings 8, 56 says this, that thou have not failed one word of all thy good promises. You haven't failed one word. We have failed. We have walked away from God. We have disappointed God. We have hurt the heart of God with the decisions we make, the choices we, we make, the way we decide to live. We have hurt the very heart of God, but God's word still stands and God can still be trusted. There's a few things in life, my brothers and sisters, that are trustworthy. Possessions, they fail. Pictures, they fade. Popularity declines. People falter. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Friends walk away. Family turn their back on you. But the word of God will stand forever. Co-workers lie and deceive behind your back and things of this sort you have to deal with, but the word of God stands forever. Let me tell you something. You may walk into a grocery store and see an empty shelf and can still walk away and say, he will supply my needs According to his riches in heaven, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. God is taking care of us. And we must believe that God's word can bring us through any situation that we are dealing with. Remember, that must be discovery, that you must digest it. Then you delight into it. Then, then you will depend on God's word. Let me, let me recap them again. That must be discovery, the discovery of what God can do in his word. Then you digest it. Then after you digest it, you delight into it. And then after you delight in it, you depend on it. You stand on it. You walk by it. You live on it by it. You see, I will, David says, look, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. He didn't say I will bless the Lord sometimes. He said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. No matter what I'm dealing with, what I'm going through, I can still bless him. I can still praise him. I can still lift him up because he is worthy. Why you feel this way, preacher? Because I found 
some, I discovered something. Then after I discovered something, I digested it. After I digested it, I delighted in it. And after I delighted in it, I learned to stand on it and depend on it. Can nobody do you? Like God, word can. He will bring us through this. He will help us through our ordeal. Give God a hand clap of praise if you can. Remember, there must be discovery. Then after what you discover, you digest, delight, and then you depend on God's word. We introduce Christ to you. He is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. He died that we might have a right to the tree of life. If you don't know him, just say, Lord, come into my life. Cling my life up. Accept me as I am and clean me up, God. He stands on the floors of grace. Extend the hands of love, ready to embrace you. As the old warrior would say, whosoever will, let him come. Rather north, south, east, and west, come. Come. If you're here, why don't you come? What you mean, preacher, if you're here? Wherever you are, God is there. <laughs> you can go right where you are, in your car, on your job, in your home. You can go to him right there. He's already there with you. We love you and God bless you. Remember, pray for every pastor preacher that is standing on the walls doing the best they can to make sure that the people are fed the word of God during a crisis that we're dealing with. Now to our special announcement uh, to all the Mount Zion members. We were projecting a reopening date for the first Sunday in July due to the high numbers that have risen in the past week or so. We're going to push it back another month uh, to the first Sunday of August. We're looking at the first Sunday of August. We're praying that everybody just obey those who have rule over us, please go out, protect yourself, wear your mask, keep your sanitizer with you. That's the only way through God's help, number one. But we have to learn to be obedient. We have to learn to be obedient. Put your mask on, protect yourself and others. And be careful going in each other's house that you're not living together because you can contract something or you can bring something to someone's house or you can contract something and bring it back to your own house. So let us please be cognizant of what is around us. Mount Zion members that are listening, please contact everyone you know uh, who don't have social media. Uh, I will do some calling. Brother Deacons will do some calling that we are projected date is the first Sunday in August. Remember, projected uh, if God says so, as the old folks say, if it's the Lord's will. Thank you also for your giving. Mount Zion members, and even people that are not Mount Zion members, you have been using the Cash App, and you have been dropping things off here at the church, and uh, you have been using the P.O. Box. The information is there on the screen. Uh, we thank you. Please continue to give unto the Lord uh, that God will continue to bless our church. Again, to all pastor preachers, we love you, and I'm praying God's grace will be upon you. Uh, that you will continue to preach God's word and teach God's word. Remember, the first Sunday in August uh, at 10, 10 a.m., we are, we are projecting date. That's our projected date. So keep us in your prayer. I love all of you. Uh, again, thank you all for all your Father's Day gifts. It, it meant a lot to me. And your calls and your cards, even things were sent in the mail. We just want to hug you and say we love you. Thank you all very, very, very much. If the Lord's will, we'll see you all Sunday morning if it's the Lord's will. Let me say this. There has been people who, uh, even in the live stream on Sunday morning, there have been some who came and sat out in the congregation with their mask on. You are free to do that. We are not announcing the church is open, but you are free to do that. There are people who are coming to practice in social distancing. They are sitting. They are spreading out in the congregation uh, we will not turn you around uh, if you want to come into the live stream service on Sunday. That's by, that's your choice, only if you're comfortable, okay? Again, we love you, and may God continue to bless you 
is our prayer. Until next time, stay safe, stay prayed up, stay with God, stay in God's word, stay in God's will, stay in God's way, and if possible, stay indoors and be obedient. Till next time, be blessed.